Okay, here's another really important remedy for the toxic relationships. And this would be, there are times when, um, when I feel that the client who's in my office is not the one who really needs the remedy. That it's really that the toxic person needs the remedy, but they're not there. An example of that would be, I very often see little kids who are being bullied. They're often like they're the smallest in the class or the nerdiest, you know, and they're being bullied by the bigger kids. And I find myself saying to the child, you know, I wish I could give a remedy to your classmates because what they're doing is really wrong, but you're here, so I want to strengthen you, I want to support you. And I often give the remedy like a podium, which is the remedy for both the one who's bullying and the one who's being bullied. Because the one who's bullying often feels insecure inside, this lack of self-confidence, they don't feel big enough, and they want to prove that they're big enough or prove they're bigger by taking it out on someone smaller. They're very aware of this hierarchy. So the interesting thing is that I've seen this many times. I've given like a podium to someone, and they it's as though they stand taller. They hold their shoulders more powerfully. They seem to radiate a kind of inner energy or the inner power, and the bullies leave them alone. And you've said this, that sometimes the client changes and the people around them change. Yeah, I actually had... Um, one of my clients asked me to treat her husband. And I, you know, I don't usually treat men. I like working with women because women, honestly, they're so good at, they are happy to spend time in their emotions and to journal and to report, you know, they go into all the details with me. So she said, can you give my husband a remedy? I said, sure, what's wrong? She gave me a little list, but I said, okay, and the wish list, is there anything else? She said, he'd like to be taller. He's like five, six, he's a little short for a man. I said, okay, I'll make you a deal. If I make your husband tall, you owe me a thousand bucks. So, it just as a joke, so I gave him like a podium. She calls me back a few days later, she says, he's taller, he was standing differently. He was like, it was like he had been cowering, and this is one of the key words for like a podium. It's like they feel somebody's about to beat them up, so they hold themselves like this. You give them like a podium, and they just stand differently. So you probably have some like Did a podium. Did you have a thousand dollars? I, well, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's a probably, fantastic remedy. You probably have some good like a podium cases. Well, we just talk about it generally. I, almost everybody on this earth needs like a podium at some point. At some point, right. No, uh -huh. one, no one was not once a small person with siblings and parents towering over them. It's mm -hmm. just, that's just how we are. We were smaller, smaller than someone else. And yeah. that, that's mirrored in the, in the evolution of, of that particular uh, moss, right? Right. The, the like a podiums were in times primeval uh, forests, very, very tall. And they, they were, um, Pretty, pretty good stuff here. I'm the, I'm right. the so like the, the dinosaur ages, they yeah. were the gigantic They were the gigantic trees. trees. And then the gymnosperms came along, right? And suddenly they looked like a podium. Oh, uh -huh. And now they're terrible. like this tall. And so yeah. they shrunk themselves down to like, to now to, it grows two or three inches over mm -hmm. time. As a, as a, that's yeah. its raison d'etre. That's, that's what they're about. Yeah. And so it's a very political remedy. When you need this remedy, um, interactions always feel like there's a winner and a loser. Mm -hmm. And you can feel if you graduate from that, you're not going to attract someone who's going to play into that so much. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, there are five, five core things, wait, three core things that happen in infancy that a toxic parent can, can really uh, make miserable for you. Mm -hmm. uh, or many, many ways it can go wrong. Being weaned from the breast. Right. Okay. So yeah. when you're on the breast, you say, oh, i got no problem. The food's coming in here. And this is, this is Life is good. good. Life is good. So the breast is withdrawn. <laughs> Suddenly, you have to gain a core competence, a skill. Mm -hmm. You've got to uh, make your hunger known. You've got to manage uh, solid food. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't go perfectly well, A or B, you can have a problem. And you become mm -hmm. a little spacey, which is, a, a, uh, you know, you, you lose your focus. That could be a, that's a, like a podium feature. Being toilet trained, exactly mm -hmm. the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you're walking around in diapers, there's no problem, right? Diapers taken away, you're not always that popular. You've got you to manage the timing and the toilet and the paper and all that stuff. The sphincters. The sphincters, <laughs> you know, become anal if you overcompensate <laughs> for that. And learning how to read. I think the brain is, monitored, is, is wired so that we learn how to read on our own. If it gets to the point where you need, you need phonics, it's already too late. You're already becoming self-conscious. And you, you're looking at reading as, as an act of, of, of power. Can I do this? Can I not? All those mm -hmm. things, if they don't go well, those transitions go well, you feel like, am I doing this or am I not? Mm -hmm. And that contributes to this feeling like someone's going to take advantage of me, or I'm, gonna, I'm a loser. So the Lycopodian like person ping-pongs between being a chicken and a bully, either mm -hmm. compensating, overly controlling, or feeling they can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And so the remedy prompts de a developmental shift into maturity. Mm -hmm. Very, very significant remedy. And so there's an obvious um, application to our political situation right now, where there's somebody, the person who feels weak,
becomes the bully and needs to prove that he's powerful by, you know, uh, saber rattling with other countries and so forth. Yeah. Um, in, in my homeopathy class many years ago, there was a woman who was a Iranian Jew. Talk about, talk about a double trouble, difficult situation. So a Middle Eastern woman who was also Jewish. And when she learned about Staphysagri, she said, I want to get a crop duster plane and fill it with Staphysagri and fly it over the Middle East and get all these women to rise up and cause a political revolution. And I bet there are people out there who think, let's get a crop duster and fill it with lycopodium like and get these boys to stop all this chest bumping, you know, and just learn to get along with each other, right? <laughs> uh, if, if, if people didn't go into lycopodium like states, there'd probably be a lot fewer people in the military. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Because people who, who like a podium on both sides of uh, both sides of that equation, either feeling you got to take orders because you have no power, or mm -hmm. wow, I I love this, I can be in charge. Right. Everything, both both the sides of that military situation are expressed. And then there's the funny thing about the way the word itself sounds. Sounds like standing on something like a podium, right. which is a complete coincidence. But the remedy is a major, major remedy for people of stage fright. So oh, right. in a, in, a, in a public speaking situation, right. You can stand up there and say, oh, I'm outnumbered. There's so many out there. They're going to eat me up if they don't like me. I can't. So tremendous remedy for stage fright. But you can turn it around. So right, like a politician, ha, thousands out there. I like the, the podium. I love, I'm eating out of the palm of my hand. This is great. <laughs> right. I, I like the podium. I love the podium. That's great. Right, That's right, great. Right. thought about that one. So Jerry, we're almost out of time. But I always like to leave our viewers with something practical that they can do. And most of what we've talked about is really the realm of a professional homeopath. Do not try this at home. But when it comes to an acute situation, which is somebody is right in the middle of an emotional crisis, they can go to the health food store and get something. And I'm just going to recommend rescue remedy. It's such a simple thing. It's completely safe. The worst thing that can happen is that it's not strong enough for someone because it's very gentle and mild. But it's mild enough people can repeat it as often as they want, unlike homeopathy, where you really do have to be careful how often you repeat it. So again, rescue remedy for a wide variety, wide variety of emotional traumas and even physical trauma, the child falling off her bike, for example, it will help the physical and as well as the emotional pain. So I always like to leave people with something practical that they can do to empower them to okay. use homeopathy at home. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to our next conversation. Thank you so much. Jerry Cantor, author of The Toxic Relationship Cure. Thank you.